Since it first premiered in 1989, The Simpsons has gone on to become one of the most successful animated shows ever. Not only is it the longest-running American animated show ever, but it's also the longest-running scripted primetime show and the longest-running sitcom. Unsurprisingly, following more than 700 episodes, it spawned a multi-billion dollar merchandising industry and was turned into a movie in 2007 that itself generated more than half a billion dollars at the box office. The trick with the show is the incredible writing. But even to the surprise of those who created it, there have been a number of times when something that happened in Springfield has gone on to take place in real life. With that in mind, let's take a look at 15 times The Simpsons predicted the future. Number 15. Murder Hornets, Coronavirus, An Absconding Mayor, and Black Lives Matter, Season 4, Episode 21. The year 2020 will go down in history as one of the most difficult that current generations have ever faced. Everyone's lives were turned upside down, and for a long time it seemed as if a return to normality was just a distant pipe dream, let alone actioning the societal change that was long overdue. If we had been clever, though, we should have carefully watched episodes of The Simpsons ahead of time, because in an episode that was aired in May of 1993, it seems as if the show managed to predict four of the year's biggest stories. The first was the coronavirus. In the episode, residents of the town purchased juicer machines from Japan, which were infected by a virus by an ill postal worker. They all contracted the foreign flu and were, for a time, fearful of going out just in case they picked it up from one of their neighbors. Also in the episode, a crowd of residents were angry at having contracted the flu and tipped over a truck as they suspected may have contained an antidote. Instead, they released a swarm of killer bees, which were somewhat similar to the murder hornets that spread across North America in early 2020. Third on the list was Mayor Quimby, who amidst all the mayhem was pretending to be working from his office when in fact he was on vacation in the Caribbean. In a surprisingly similar story to the case of Mayor of Austin, Texas, who did virtually that exact thing. And finally, in parallels to what's probably the most important story to have happened in 2020, residents who were angry at the authorities worked together to topple a statue in protest against what it represented. Number 14, The Utah Monolith, Season 3, Episode 8. In 2020, while conducting a helicopter survey of the wild bighorn sheep in San Juan County, Utah, state biologists noticed something unusual in a red sandstone slot canyon. Upon closer inspection, it was revealed to be a mysterious metal monolith that was around 9.8 feet tall above the bedrock and 23 inches wide on each side. But this wasn't the first time we had seen an object like this seemingly in the middle of nowhere, because it also featured in an episode of The Simpsons from the third season in 1991 called Lisa's Pony. The episode begins with Homer having a dream that he's an ape and is in a parody of the Dawn of Man sequence from the 1968 movie 2001, A Space Odyssey. In it, Homer's sitting around a pool with a group of apes, but then they all run off to investigate a strange metal monolith that appears to be located within a nearby slot canyon. Is this another case of The Simpsons predicting the future, or actually influencing the future whereby the creators of the Utah monolith were inspired by what they saw in the episode? Either way, as an onlooker, it certainly seems like a massive coincidence. Number 13, Beatles Fan Mail, Season 2, Episode 18. In the 18th episode of the second season, which aired in April of 1991, Marge becomes an artist after winning a prize for a painting she made of Homer. While reminiscing about how she had always wanted to follow her artistic passion, Bart finds pictures of Ringo Starr that she had painted at college, and she told the story of how she sent one of them to him, but never heard back. The episode then cuts to Ringo Starr in his office, still trawling through the sacks of fan mail he had been sent during the Beatles' heyday. Decades after receiving it, he finally opened the package and sent her an encouraging letter back that spurs her on with her pursuits. The idea that a member of the Beatles would take so long to reply to a piece of fan mail isn't that far-fetched, however, and the episode appears to have predicted something that would happen more than 20 years later. In 2013, two women from Essex in the UK were stunned to receive a letter from Paul McCartney more than 50 years after having sent him a recording of them asking to be able to meet him backstage. While it didn't inspire them to follow their dreams, the two hadn't seen each other for more than 40 years, and the response from the legendary Beatle helped to rekindle their friendship. Number 12, Farmville, Farming Simulator, Season 9, Episode 13. It's not just real-world events that The Simpsons seem to have the ability to predict, but cultural phenomena too. In the 13th episode of Season 9, the carnival is visiting Springfield. Homer and Bart immediately went there to try to avoid having to do the chores and become carnies themselves. 
In the introductory scenes to the carnival, however, kids can be seen with virtual reality headsets on, playing a game called Yard Work Simulator. While this may well have been intended as a joke at the time, it pretty much nailed a future gaming obsession, notably the roaring success of Farmville on Facebook that was released several years later, and subsequently, Farming Simulator, both of which are games that essentially see the player carrying out monotonous tasks from the real world. Could it be that, after seeing the game on The Simpsons, the creators of these two franchises set out to create an actual video game where you could harvest corn and tend to your farm? Or are The Simpsons writers truly ahead of their time? On its own, it could be put down to coincidence. But this has happened so often now that they surely have predictive powers. Number 11. The Baby Translator Season 3, Episode 24 During Season 3, The Simpsons was still finding its groove, but in one memorable episode called Brother, Can You Spare Two Dimes, Homer finds himself receiving $2,000 in compensation after an accident at the nuclear power plant. Soon after, he meets his brother, who in a previous episode had lost all his money thanks to a disastrous car launch that had been designed by Homer. He asks Homer for financial help to assist with launching a brand new product, the Baby Translator. Of course, in 1992, when the episode was broadcast, the idea of technology being able to interpret a baby's crying seemed a little far-fetched, but more recently, it's become much more of a realistic prospect. In 2015, an app was released that promised to be able to do exactly that after the developers spent years collecting more than 200,000 distinct noises from more than 100 newborn babies. By attributing meaning to each of the sounds, they were able to build an algorithm that would analyze a cry and associate it with a particular need, such as wanting food, needing sleep, requiring a change of a diaper, and plenty more. According to those behind the project, it's 92% accurate for babies under two weeks old, and around 75% accurate for those that are several months old. By further refinement across different age groups, it's hoped that an app like this could be a vital parenting tool, and will save countless hours trying to figure out what exactly it is that your child wants. Number 10. The Three-Eyed Fish Season 2, Episode 4 one of the most famous scenes in any episode of The Simpsons came from the fourth episode of Season 2, when Bart, who was fishing in a pond near the Springfield nuclear power plant, caught Blinky, a three-eyed fish. Airing in 1990, the residents of the town become concerned about the spread of radioactive waste, which leads to an investigation into the plant, and Mr. Burns is given a $60 million fine for all of the safety breaches. It's another example of something that was likely intended to be a joke, but worryingly became a reality just over 20 years later. A fisherman was hauling in his catch in a lake in Argentina's Cordoba province when he noticed something very strange about one fish. The lake is near to a local power plant, and just like the Simpsons episode, the fish had developed a third eye. Whether this was a result of radiation or simply an incredibly rare mutation was never entirely clear, but as you can imagine, the local community was outraged by the discovery and called for an increased regulation of the power plant to ensure the environment was protected. Number 9. The Tamako Plant, Season 11, Episode 5 Airing in 1999, the fifth episode of Season 11 was called EIEI -E Doe. It begins with Homer being inspired by a Zorro movie and begins slapping people with a glove and challenging them to a duel. He expects everyone to give in to what he wants, but eventually he picks on the wrong person, a southern gentleman who accepts the challenge. So to save his life, Homer and the family leave Springfield to live on the farm he grew up on. At first, the land is too poor quality to grow any crops, but after getting Lenny to bring him some plutonium from the plant, the seedlings begin to sprout. There was a problem, though. Homer had mixed up the tomato seeds with the tobacco seeds, and the result was what they called a tomacco plant. Of course, nature doesn't quite work that way, but tomato plants and tobacco plants are surprisingly similar. A fan of the show called Rob Bauer was inspired by what he saw and was determined to create a tomacco plant of his own. To everyone's surprise, he was successful in 2003, and despite looking just like a tomato, tests confirmed that it did indeed contain nicotine. The plant produced fruit for 18 months before it died, but the tomacos didn't exactly taste as nice as a proper tomato. After proving it could be done, there was no demand for him to keep growing them, so as far as we know, this was the first and only tomaco plant to ever be cultivated. We're constantly adding more people to the Top 5's production team to bring you all the best content. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on and hit the like button. Number 8. Lady Gaga at the Super Bowl Season 23, Episode 22 
As a result of its increasing and constant popularity, The Simpsons has been able to attract a wide range of celebrity faces to visit Springfield over the years. In the 22nd episode of season 23 called Lisa Goes Gaga, it was Lady Gaga's turn to make an appearance. In the episode, every resident of the town has fallen into a slump, and Gaga just so happens to be passing through on her way to a concert. She takes a shine to Lisa and tries to help improve everyone's mood, which involves fantastical costumes, musical numbers, and the typical Gaga flair. During one set piece, the pop megastar flies around in a harness in the air while she plays the piano and a series of lights hover behind her to illuminate her performance. Even if you haven't seen the episode, this might sound familiar because it's virtually identical to her halftime performance at the Super Bowl in 2017. Her Versace design jumpsuit looked very similar to the one she wore on The Simpsons, and there was even a sequence where she flew through the air with lit drones hovering behind her. Number 7. Robot Librarians, Season 6, Episode 19. The Simpsons has managed to be surprisingly at the cutting edge of technology, to the point where they even predicted the look of the iPod in one of the earlier episodes. In the 19th episode of season 6, though, they added a commentary how in the future a lot of people's jobs would be at risk of being replaced by robots. Called Lisa's Wedding, Lisa visits a fortune teller, and this becomes one of the explicitly future-looking episodes of the show. Rather than focusing on the obvious jobs that will be replaced, they choose to, instead, feature a robot librarian. Now, Having been broadcast in 1995, this prediction failed to take into account the prevalence of the internet, and the fact that most libraries around the world are now struggling to maintain the funding they need to remain open. So in many ways, the role of a librarian has been replaced by online search engines and AI assistance already. But this doesn't mean that the writers completely missed the mark. In 2016, students at Aberystwyth University in Wales revealed their designs for a walking, talking library robot known as Hue. It contained a virtual library catalog and could interact with people with voice commands. Once it figures out the book someone is looking for, it's then able to lead them to the shelf where they'll find it. It's a type of narrowly, artificially intelligent robot that's designed solely to perform in one place, so it doesn't require such a vast online database as AI like Siri and Alexa. However, it's possible that robots like these are commonly seen in the stores of the future because they're far simpler to program and don't require the resources of a huge tech empire to create. Number 6. A Game of Thrones Plot Twist Season 29, Episode 1 Whether you like it or not, there's no denying that the Game of Thrones became one of the biggest television events of the past decade. Chronicling the political movements in the Kingdom of Westeros, it had people on the edge of their seats, wondering what was going to happen next. If you still haven't seen it or are still trying to avoid spoilers, then you had better fast forward, because it turns out that The Simpsons actually managed to predict a major plot twist of the series. The episode in question was the first of season 29, which was a Game of Thrones parody. In it, Homer manages to revive a dragon, and it proceeds to fly over to the village and burn it to the ground. This was broadcast two years before the final season of Game of Thrones aired, but as anyone who's a fan of the fantasy show will know, the penultimate episode, Daenerys Targaryen and her dragon lay waste to the people of King's Landing. According to the Game of Thrones writers, this had always been a planned twist right from the beginning, but there's no way the Simpsons writers could have known this. Or was there? Number 5. Guitar Hero Season 14, Episode 2 There have been a number of times when The Simpsons accidentally managed to predict a future video game franchise that would go on to generate hundreds of millions of dollars, and one of the most surprising happened during the second episode of Season 14, which was called How I Spent My Strummer Vacation. It was the last episode to be produced using traditional cel-shaded animation, and also one of the biggest lists of guest stars including cameos from Elvis Costello, Keith Richards, Mick Jagger, and Lenny Kravitz. In the episode, the family try to cheer Homer up by taking him to the rock and roll fantasy camp, which is being run by the Rolling Stones. And after being taught the basics of rock and roll, Homer becomes the lead guitarist and singer for a performance at the end. Broadcast in 2002, Homer's journey doesn't end there because he's given the opportunity to perform with the rock stars at a concert. And along the way, he's given a jacket by them, which says on the back, Guitar Hero. A few years later, the Guitar Hero video game franchise was launched, and while it's since fallen out of fashion, it was, for a number of years, one of the top-selling titles across all platforms. Number 4. The Shape of the Universe, Season 10, Episode 22 What shape do you think the universe is? The Simpsons counts a number of highly intelligent mathematicians in its writing team, so there's perhaps no surprise that they sneak references throughout the show. 
But there's one episode that was broadcast in 1999 that managed to predict something that, at the time, no one had any idea about the truth. The episode titled They Saved Lisa's Brain had world-renowned physicist Stephen Hawking as a cameo. And while talking to him in Moe's, Hawking says to Homer that his theory of the universe is the shape of a donut is an interesting one. Of course, as viewers, we immediately assume that Homer's only reason for suggesting this is his love of the sugary sweet snacks. But it turns out he was a lot closer to the current theories of the universe than could have been known at the time. Just a few years later, new modeling of the universe's creation started to suggest that the donut theory might, in fact, be the case. Instead of being an infinite structure, it's now believed to be finite and continuously wraps back in on itself. A number of observations, such as unexpected ripples in the fabric of space-time, are pointing towards it, and possibly means that Homer is far more intelligent than anyone had given him credit for. Number 3. Nobel Peace Prize Winner Season 22, Episode 1 In 2010, the new season's opening episode, called Elementary School's Musical, appeared to be just like any other at first. But six years later, fans pointed to a particular scene in the show that made a surprising prediction. In the episode, Krusty invites Homer to join him at the Nobel Peace Prize ceremony in Norway, only to find the whole thing has been an elaborate setup. But with Nobel fever gripping Springfield, the kids decide to make bets on who they think is going to win each prize. Lisa, Database, Milhouse, and Martin all pick different names, and amazingly, one of these actually turned out to be correct. Milhouse's guess for the economics prize was Ben R. Holstrom from MIT, who went on to win the prize in 2016 for work on contract theory and how to determine which industry should be run by the government, and which shouldn't. It was yet another incredible prediction and possibly proves that Milhouse is, in fact, the cleverest of them all. Number 2. The Higgs Boson Season 8, Episode 1 For a long time, the Higgs Boson, also known as the God Particle, was the most elusive particle in physics. Scientists were having trouble explaining why objects actually have mass and what's responsible for causing it, so it theorized that there was an unknown particle behind it, known as the Higgs boson. Proving its existence required building the largest machine on the planet, the Large Hadron Collider, and after years of testing and calibrations, they finally made the breakthrough they were looking for. The Higgs boson did, in fact, exist. A lot of this effort could have been avoided, though, at least in the sense that they could have narrowed the range in which they were looking for the particle in. If only the scientists had watched the first episode of the eighth season of The Simpsons. In it, Homer becomes an inventor and becomes a naturally gifted mathematician. There's a scene where he has written a seemingly nonsensical equation on the blackboard behind him. But when you interpret it, now knowing what the Higgs boson is, it's remarkably close to describing the particle's size. In fact, it's just a fraction larger than the measurements at CERN proved it to be, which means they could have saved billions of dollars and got to the solution 15 years earlier simply by watching a cartoon on a Sunday evening. Number 1. Disney Buying Fox Season 10, Episode 5 While the show may well have predicted future events for other people and things unrelated to The Simpsons, it also manages to foresee something that would directly impact its own future. This happened in the fifth episode of Season 10, called When You Dish Upon a Star in which Homer starts working for Alec Baldwin and Kim Basinger. As usual with episodes of The Simpsons, there are numerous gags throughout the episode, but there's one that's shown towards the end that showed remarkable foresight. It showed a screen with the 20th Century Fox logo on it, but underneath it was written a division of Walt Disney Company. The episode was broadcast in 1998, so this was likely just a dig at the broadcaster that had supported The Simpsons since the beginning. But no one could have known that almost 20 years later, Disney would indeed acquire Fox in a multi-billion dollar deal. Due to the controversy associated with it, Disney won't be retaining the 20th Century Fox brand, but The Simpsons is now part of the House of Mouse and is now down to the Disney execs to decide whether the show will keep going for another 30 years. Watch our future playlist for more top 15 videos about the future. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best future-related videos.